So um, for lab today, uh, the main thing that I want to uh, get through with lab today is uh, that I want to get you started on becoming accustomed to the software that you're going to be using. Uh, so for many of you, that's going to mean a kind of homework. Uh, in general, the way these lab sessions are going to work, and no, today will no, be no exception, is I'll come in here for the first half an hour or so, uh, give you kind of a mini lecture as I would. Can you, uh, can you make the screen behind you bigger? Oh, like zoom in, like, uh, like this. Does that help? Uh, oh, this thing right here, I see. You want me to get rid of this stuff. The, uh, yeah, I can do that. I have to, I have to get rid of that, this thing. Uh, okay. So yeah, I'll get rid of the poll too here. Um, so I think we've got a few answers. If you want to answer still, you can. Uh, but yeah, that, it's kind of the same distribution of, as what I thought. So, uh, you know, what I thought we'd see there. Okay. Yeah, it's that that uh, that was the Zoom interface for the screen sharing that was kind of like up in the way. I need to remember to get rid of that every time. All right, and so um, I've fixed the problems with the syllabus I had from before where it said mastering chemistry. Uh, I had just got them mixed up in my mind. Mastering chemistry is for my Chem 101 class. Uh, so where it said mastering chemistry, now it says correctly, McGraw-Hill connect on the schedule. I fixed the flex day, it's actually 4-8, uh, and just moved the other stuff back here. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, that was it. That was all I changed. I just uh, made it a little clear to about attendance uh, here. So it says, please attend Zoom lectures if possible. Lectures will also be recorded and placed in my YouTube channel and I included the link. It hasn't gone away. Oh, really? This is still there. Is it still there? It's still there. Okay, I might get rid of this for now. I had this happen before too. Um, it would not go away, it ends up getting linked linked somehow to the screen share. Uh, this, so this was up, right? And it didn't show up on my screen. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to end the sharing and uh, hopefully, um, yeah, this happened to me the other day too when I, when I was trying and so suddenly it started doing that. Uh, Hmm. Um, so we'll spend a bit of time on this. I don't want to spend too much time. Uh. So yeah, I'm not really sure why it did that. Uh, and so I'm gonna have to fix that in the coming weeks. It obviously it didn't do it in our lecture. Uh, so that was good, but I want to know when it's going to do that. Uh, so that it doesn't do that. It's frozen, huh? The screen share is frozen, huh? Okay. <clears throat> hmm. Sorry about this, guys. I'm still learning this too. So that yeah, my controls went away. That's what happened. View. Oh yeah. So. Sorry guys, 
It did this the other day too. It linked them. I I noticed it when it did it too. It it like linked them in a weird way when the way in a way it shouldn't be doing. Uh, I'm trying to bring back my controller <laughs> for the Zoom. The, the Zoom controller is gone, and I can't bring it back up. Okay. That's really weird that the controls left. Okay, I'm gonna close OBS real quick. Okay, there we go. It, it Somehow it links them. Okay, I need to start OBS before I start Zoom. I'm just gonna share my screen with you guys. You guys won't see me right now. I'll, I'll fix that problem later. I'll just share the actual screen. Okay, so now you should just see my screen. Uh, do you just see my screen? Yeah. <clears throat> That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, yeah, something weird happens between OBS, uh, which is the broadcasting software I was using to do the green screen effects, and um, and the zoom sometimes they get connected in a weird way uh, there we go all right so I'll just show you guys here without my camera on me uh, but as long as you can hear me and everything I'll have the chat open so uh, <clears throat> yeah let's go back here so I wanted to go to canvas and show you what I changed so I, I fixed the syllabus I also included a link to my zoom room so this time uh, when I was doing it through confer zoom, which I moved all the way down here, every time I make a new meeting on confer zoom, which won't even work right now, but every time I make a new meeting in here like this one, it gives it a special ID um, that you can only get to it to that meeting through that particular link. So what I did instead was I made a link here. This is my zoom room and I'm going to be, I'll be uh, lecturing out of that Zoom room every time. Uh, so it'll be the same link. You just click that and you'll go there. Um, and then I did include a link too to my YouTube videos. So uh, now the one we just saw is up. So this is the this is the one from the this is from from the lecture this morning. So all that's already up on YouTube if you want to look at it again. And there was me lecturing whatever. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of considering just staying in the corner down here, and uh, and lecturing that way. Uh, I won't be able to point as well, but pointing is only okay. I'd say either that or I might make some opacity on myself so you can see through. Uh, <clears throat> you guys can email me to let me know, like if you like the lecture a certain way, I'm gonna be trying a few different things, but if you like a certain way and you thought it was really helpful, just let me know. I'm still learning how to teach at a distance myself. Uh, these are the old scores. Again, I'll be building the scores into the grades part of, uh, <coughs> of um, Canvas. I just have to get all the assignments in there first. I have them on master and chemistry and stuff, but I have to move them over. Um, again, here's, uh, so your, here's what your homework is for today. So your homework is these two things. Number one, I think you should get the access to the Microsoft products, okay? So this is what you're going to be doing in lab. Number one, get access to Word and Excel if you haven't already. Uh, this is not absolutely required, but if you can, do this. Number two, this is absolutely required. Register for McGraw-Hill Connect. Please, please, please use the instructions shown here. Uh, you can get them right here. Okay. Uh, if you do it a different way, sometimes it acts weird. Okay. So I want you to, to do it in the way that's shown here through Canvas. Uh, do it through Canvas. Um, in terms of students for Connect, let me see how many I have at this point. I want to have all 13 of you in here. Right now I have 11. 
So there's two of you that still haven't done it. Uh, please make sure to do that as soon as you can. Uh, that's how your exam will be administered next week. And as I said, it will be like a multiple choice type thing. So answer entry won't be as big of an issue. Uh, the later exams, I might use some of those questions if I think the entry works well. Um, but like I was showing you in the lecture, you can review on the, um, the video that I put up. Uh, I want you to be inputting your stuff into, um, into, uh, into your answers into McGraw-Hill Connect. Uh, one thing I wanted to note about the Connect is let's say that you don't want to be online the whole time you're doing these problems. Um, let's say you want to do them, you know, offline and then come back and put in the answers. You can do that. Uh, so there's an option to print the problems. Uh, so if you want to print all the problems, you can even save them as a PDF. Uh, you can do that. Uh, you can print out the problems or save them as a file. Uh, yeah. So it's possible to, to print out these assignments uh, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, in terms of the policies for your Canvas uh, or for your uh, McGraw-Hill Connect assignments, this will be the general policy for any assignment that is an exam. No time limit. The exams will have time limits. Printing is allowed. Uh, the questions will be in a particular order for the assignment. I'm not sure. Uh, tell me about that on your end. Um, I'm not sure if it's possible to print them all at once. I certainly hope it is. Uh, but it, it, let me look from the student view here to see for sure. So if I'm doing a homework like this and I click the homework assignment and I'm a student and I begin and I press continue here. Okay, so it looks a little different on your end. Um, so notice, uh, I think Madison had a question about the book. There are links to the book right here too. And look at that, it actually brings it up uh, while on the side for pull out. But Oh, cool. Okay. So there is a link to the book. I thought I had seen that earlier. I just forgot when we were talking earlier, but it does link to the problems in the book. Oh, it's the problems mm -hmm. in the book, but you can go to other parts of the book too. So let's say oh, I wanted cool. to look at okay. a section of chapter 18 about, uh, you know, the Arrhenius definitions of acids and bases. This actually is much better than those reading assignment things. Yeah, maybe I'll take out those reading assignment things. This is actually pretty nice, uh, the interface through the homework. So you can just mm -hmm. pops out. That's pretty nice. Uh, in terms of printing, if I choose to print, so when I, what I was looking at before, oh boy, that is annoying. Yeah, you can print it. You can only print it problem by problem as far as, oh man, that's really annoying. I, so I guess you kind of do have to do them online. I feel like there used to be a, a way to print them as a chunk, but all I see on this one page is, is the one problem. Yeah. And then you go to the, so you do, they do end up taking you know, here's what you probably could do. Let's see if we can do this. What if I do this? I copy paste the problem into like somewhere, a Word document. How does that look? Yeah, so that might be the best option. So just if you really want to print them, uh, you can do like that and just copy paste the problems. Unfortunately, that's not, that's not that great, but there's a cue out sometimes. Okay, check my work, correct. All right, submit. Okay, uh, yeah. 
And I think it's acting a little weird because I'm the instructor, but oh yeah, there we go. Next down here in the next problem. <clears throat> and then you fill those in and so forth. Um, so you could though, you could just copy paste them. Like that. Yeah, so that, that's probably the easiest way. Because um, apparently, yeah, it won't show all of them at once. Hmm, I'm trying to move these. Oh yeah, there we go, that's the button, okay. <clears throat> load each question then print them individually okay so here's what i'm going to do uh maxwell is th see this uh copy pasting that i'm doing what i'll do is i'll copy paste the problems and i'll uh and so that if you want to print them and then put them in later um, while you're doing something else, you can do that. Uh, so yeah, because if your internet connection is a little, yeah, okay, so I'll do that. Uh, that way you can at least do them offline and all you have to do is enter them online. So <clears throat> what you can do is have the printed out sheet right next to you and then as you do them, when one finishes loading, you can enter the answer and then you can continue. Uh, and so we'll do that. On my end, it, they load pretty quickly, but it, it's like, you know, but I know not everyone has the same internet connection. And uh, these are, yeah, it's kind of cumbersome, uh, unfortunately. But this is what goes with our textbook. And uh, so it's very consistent, at least with our textbook. So that should help at least, because I didn't want to change textbooks or change systems too much right in the middle of the semester. That probably would have been really bad. So I'll just copy paste them uh, into um, a Word document. That way you don't have to load them up one by one ahead of time. Okay, uh, let me see, were there any other questions? Okay. So that's uh, how to deal with the McGraw-Hill Connect. If we're looking at it from your student view again, um, so I opened up like the, the reading assignments for the entire book. Oh, how do you restart the homework? So let's say um, I was doing this homework, okay. Uh, was I doing 17? So let's say that I, um, I'm doing this, okay, sometimes, check my work, okay, got it, next. I, I kind of left the student view and came back, so I think it, it hasn't saved. But if we look, okay, it'll tell me I did the first problem right, right? And let's say that I accidentally submit it um, and I want to do it again because I don't want to just have one right, right? It will actually show you all the correct answers too. So you could definitely cheat on these quite easily. I just don't recommend it. Because um, I, I do have it set up where it will show you. Uh, so these are all graded. So let's say that I want to, uh, I want to start the assignment again. So I exit the assignment and I go back. All right, it says one. Anyway, you, get, you guys get unlimited attempts. So even if you wanted to restart it all the way from the beginning, uh, like fresh, you could do that. Uh, you just, you have unlimited attempts. So let me go back to where I was in my teacher view and show you the policies that I've set up for your homework assignments. So you can print them. Um, you have references and stuff, all of that. 
uh, on each new attempts, you revise your previous attempt. So you can just keep revising and revising and revising over and over. Uh, so access to the ebook is allowed, 0% is de deducted, hints are allowed, check my work is allowed, showing solutions is allowed. And uh, you can enter your answers plus or minus 2% of their, of the, the, you know, accepted answer. So there is a little wiggle room for rounding errors and stuff. Um, so I basically set up the policies that I allowed late submittal, uh, although I don't suggest that you do that, uh, 0%. So even though it's due at this time, this is when I think you should have it done. It's not going to stop being available. Um, after that, <clears throat> you'll be able to submit it late even, but I don't recommend that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about this McGraw-Hill Connect? For chapter 17, um, I'll, I'll try to get that up as soon as I can, Maxwell. Uh, just copy pasting. I'll copy paste the questions real quick and put them in a Word document. And I'll just say uh, connect copy pasted questions. But entering them will be a pain. Uh, you'll want to be doing that. If, you're, if your questions are loading very slowly, you'll want to be doing that while you're working on something else, probably. Okay. Any other questions about the connect? So uh, the problems are not exactly the same ones as they are in the book. Um, so for example, for chapter 17, um, I don't think I can actually edit the assignment anymore. Yeah, okay. So if you look at the question numbers, most of them are odd numbers. Um, this is because the answers in the back of the book are mostly for the even numbered questions. So what they did was for all the connect questions, they uh, they <laughs> they did the ones that they don't have the answers in the book. So when I gave you a chapter 17, uh, check my work is uh, just uh, basically that's how you check if it's right or wrong. And you can try it again and again. Yeah, that's how your answer is recorded. Yeah, so it's very not restrictive like that. You can check for work and ask for hints and all of that. Uh, I just want you to do the problems. Uh, so this is the most important thing is when it comes to the restrictions, I didn't want there to be, I wanted there to be as few technical glitches for you as possible in case you like, you know, wanted to change something or go back and do it again or whatever. You can do all of those things. Uh, you could even, you know, just co essentially copy the answers they give you, but you definitely don't want to do that. Right. And you will be getting lots of points for these assignments. Uh, mainly, I'm just seeing that did you, you know, attempt to do them. So like I said, it, when, the fact that I've made these restrictions very limited, not very many restrictions at all, I mean, this means that you could find ways of technically getting the points without knowing as much as you should. Of course, I still have the test to check for that to some extent. But I've made the test worth less because I don't want that to be the problem for you is that you have some technical glitch or something. And you're already dealing with enough having to shift to online, I figure. So you don't wanna be worrying about grades right now. You wanna be worried about learning. Uh, so make sure that you're using these to learn. So to answer your question, Wendy, they are questions from the book. Um, these are, but they're not the ones that have the answers in the back, but you can still get the answers off this system. So these are the questions that I'll be signing from here on out. I gave you a chapter 17 assignment because I thought, I didn't know how far you had gotten into the homework assignment that I had given you before, uh, but I thought it would be very good to review anyway, since it's been a couple weeks. Let me know if you're having lots of issues with partial credit, if you don't feel like you're getting enough points, you can always redo the assignment. Uh, if you're really having trouble, send me your answer and uh, I'll see if I can figure out what the problem is with entering it. Um, if it's an entry problem. So yeah, any technical glitches, let me know as soon as you can. 
what I'll basically do is I'll go back into this system in student mode and I'll try to do what you did and see if I can fix it. And then I have, you know, capability of making a video or if a lot of people ask me showing it in lecture. So I can always do that. <laughs> and for lecture, it's possible that I'll be able to make the videos ahead of times uh, in the future. Um, so it may be that we have more time in lecture for questions. Uh, I could have you watch a video. I, have, I don't know if I'll be able to do that yet. I know at least I can lecture, uh, but yeah. So there's a little bit more time for like lecture and stuff because I could make videos that you can watch. And that includes videos of, you know, how to fill in some of these. All right, any other questions about the Connect? And of course you guys can ask with your voice too. That's fine, perfectly fine. If that's easier for you, or you can type, I don't care. Whatever you like better. Okay. So, uh, next I want to talk about how you're going to do lab. So the reason why I want you to get, going back here, Microsoft Word, uh, if you can, is because when we start doing the actual lab assignments next week, so if we scroll down here to what we're doing, next week I've got experiment eight, You'll download this um, report as a Word document. So it's a little bit easier if you can just download the Word document directly. And what I wanted to show you guys was um, how you could write some math into the Word document. Uh, so this is going to be kind of a lecture about how to use Microsoft equations. Um, so uh, let's say that I wanted now, and this, this is not the perfect example of, of the type of experiment where this would be done, but uh, I did want to give you guys a couple of tips about how to type this in if you just prefer to type it in. Uh, so as we're going to see, for example, uh, the, the concentration of hydronium is the the 10 to the minus pH. So we were about to start talking about that today. And I'd like to do a little bit more lecture in lab today, just so that we can uh, keep on the lecture material here. But uh, if I want to, first of all, there's always copy and paste, uh, but I just want to show you um, how you might write things in Word if you haven't already. In terms of, um, in terms of superscripts and subscripts, what I often do is I'll just type in something like this on Word, Oops. H3O plus, uh, and then I'll apply, uh, I'll apply a subscript or a superscript. Now, there are buttons for this up here, right here, you can click the button like that. I will be expecting subscripts and superscripts. Also, um, there, is, there are shortcuts here. So, um, the other option here is if I type control H three O plus, so I can, so you guys can do this quickly. I can either press that button or if I highlight the three, which I generally do it by holding shift and pressing the left or right button. You can also do it with your mouse, but you can hit control shift and plus, and that will be a superscript. Control, shift, and then hit plus. Or you can hit control and then hit plus, and it will do a subscript. And if you wanna undo the subscript, you press control plus again. So control plus, control plus, control plus, control plus. Control, shift plus, control, shift plus, control, shift plus. Uh, yeah. And so for here, this is up at the subscript, so I'd hit control shift plus. And that's the way I usually do things when I'm trying to type it fast. Uh, and then equals, 
uh, 10 to the minus pH. Yeah, so these are already up there. So the way where I got this uh, experiment eight online version was I got it right off of Canvas. It's already there. You could actually do this lab today if you wanted to. You have to do it any time before uh, April 8th. So there's some videos. So if you want to watch the video, you click the link. Um, so going back here, the experiment eight write-up is right here. It says experiment eight online version. And then to turn it in, so let's say I, I filled all this out now on the Word document, or the other option is uh, you can write on it and, um, and scan it or take a picture of it. You could upload it that way, but either way you'll be uploading it where it says experiment eight. So I can either type like this or I can write on it. Now, one thing I wanted to show you is for more complicated equations, let's say you want to do uh, something with conversion factors, you'll want to do insert and then you'll choose equation. And that will start a box like this. And then you'll have all kinds of stuff up here. So you can make, for example, a fraction here. So I can make a fraction. Okay. Let's say I wanted to do like uh, some conversion, like 25.3 milliliters. Okay. Then I uh, would put in some math stuff uh, from the equation. Um, <clears throat> like I can put X or, or I can put an actual time symbol too. There's time symbols in here. You can see it right here, the time symbol. And then let's say I wanted to make a, uh, a, a fraction here. First, I, or a, a conversion factor. First, I'd use a parentheses to put the conversion factor in. Then I'd click this drop down here and put a fraction. And then I could say uh, 1,000 milliliters is the same as one liter, right? Okay, and then I could click, I clicked on the side here, or you can use the right arrow to go all the way to the side. And then as long as you're clicking in this box here, the equations will show up. And you press times, and then I do another conversion factor, okay? And then I click in here, I call them fraction, do another fraction. And then I might say uh, 0 0.0250 moles per liter. And this is essentially how I'm gonna be setting things up uh, to show you stuff on slides. So I'll do it you know, one at a time, uh, basically. And so this lab template is here. The other lab templates, I have them already. I've already made them except for experiment 20, but I made all the rest. Um, and I'll be uploading those as we go. <clears throat> but the, um, the, point, the points in the lab shown on the syllabus will be following those, exactly. Oh, so clicking, let's see, let's go back. So if we go to home, if we go to here, like this. Yeah. Click. Yeah, and we're going to free access. Let me sign out of mine. Uh, sign out so you can see what it looks like. Okay. So if I go there now, uh, it will ask me, it'll say like, oh, it'll ask me for a sign in. So here you want to put in your email address from the school. It's very important you put in the school's email address. Uh, it may look a little bit different if you're first establishing, oh, cre you, uh, you'll create one. So this is saying sign in, you say create one. And when you create your account, uh, yeah, you can do use Office Online. So you can use the Office apps, but you will have a premium account. You have to sign in 
sign in with your school email address. Uh, well, it signed me in again. It knows because uh, I've already made an account. And so um, when I click it, I don't, I don't, it takes me to a little window or a, a, to a window that says Office 365, good afternoon. There's no like pop-up for logging in or anything like that. Oh, really? It's just blank. Kind of like when you get in and all your apps are there like that, but it's blank. Hmm. Maybe send me a picture of that and we'll see if we can solve that problem for you. Okay. Oh, okay. So J uh, Janet's saying she had the same problem. <clears throat> ah, okay. So you may, and this is another thing. So if you guys have problems with specifically with campus related things like your campus access to this one, to this uh, office products or your campus access, not the McGraw Hill, but your campus access to like Canvas. I had someone from my other class yesterday couldn't log into Canvas uh, for some reason, but got help through the help desk. So the help desk, <clears throat> Yeah, Janet. So, was you were you able to get in and get your office documents? So, this is the help desk here. You can call this number. I just searched in Google SBVC help desk, okay. and I got these to come up. So. Uh, for, and you, so if you go the second link, if you search SBVC help desk, the second link is support.valleycollege.edu. And you can also, if you don't want to call, you can either call or you can su submit a, a ticket online. Okay. Uh, you may have to register for this school dude thing, which is their way of submitting the tickets, or you can call them. Oh, okay. Okay, so Janet's still having hers sorted out. Um, if worse comes to worse, uh, and you can't, you know, open it, open it up in Word, you might be able to open it up like, let me see, what if I, uh, <clears throat> buy a Google Docs, let's say, and I download it. Like if I download the Word document and open it. So this is a Word document. Mm -hmm. uh, Will the shortcuts that you're talking about still work with the Google Docs? The shortcuts may be a bit different. Uh, if, if you do want some advice on that, I'll try to figure it out because uh, okay. I'm used to using Word, but mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some type of shortcuts, almost certain. <clears throat> yeah, there's LibreOffice as well, but having Microsoft Office is kind of nice. But mm -hmm. it, if you open it through Word, uh, like let's say edit, you can edit in Google Docs. So this is the syllabus. Or no, this is an exam. There's Chemistry 101 exam too, but you can see the same thing. It looks pretty much similar. Let me see if the shortcuts are the same. No, <laughs> they're not. Uh, so, but they do have subscripts and superscripts, I know. Uh, but yeah, if you can, if you can get to use a uh, word, it's a little bit better, I'd say, okay. but uh, you should be able to edit it still in Google docs. Uh, they even have form equations too. So you can do equations there too. It's just the interface isn't quite as nice as, as word, I'd say. Okay. I'll just try going through the help desk and see what happens. Yeah, so contact the help desk uh, if you have any issues with Canvas or uh, with with that particular thing, getting your uh, your free um, Microsoft software. Okay, uh, thank you. So that's through the yeah the campus stuff, and it's a shame that they're having some trouble with that right now, and so many people are trying to get it. Maybe that's part of the reason why. 
Okay. Uh, so yeah. So what you'll do is you'll fill out the Word document. So uh, you can refer back to this video if you want to know more uh, about, you know, how to writing this, or you can ask me. Uh, maybe I'll make a short separate video. We won't need this right away, but I think before our next lab, I'll make a little separate video of how to type Microsoft equations. But that was just a preview if you want to start right away. So you can type things in like this, or you can write them. If you print and, and take picture, you can submit. And here's how you're going to submit your labs. So after you've downloaded the document, which I'll include in the modules right before the experiment, if you go here, let me go back to the dash, uh, not dashboard, the, um, the main part of the course so I can go into student view. So you guys are coming down here. Okay, you download this document somehow, either to you know Google Drive or whatever, you open it somehow. Um, lots of ways to open a, a Word document. Best way would be Word, but um, <clears throat> here, when you get here, uh, you're going to upload either your Word document or your scanned picture, scanned or photos taken uh, here. Uh, hope, I hope you can get it all into one or two files, although if you have multiple pictures, it is possible to upload all of them in this way. You can upload more than one. Uh, and this is how you'll submit it. And then when it goes to uh, grading, the way I'll grade them is, like this. Okay, so let's say you've turned in your experiment eights. I'm going to go over here and I will have speed grader right here. And I will write on your document using my mouse or my pen thing here. And I can put comments and even videos or whatever. I can comment with a video or an attachment or a sound or whatever and I'll assign a grade, which is out of 10 points, just like the, the other labs were. We're just gonna have a few fewer labs as we go forward, uh, just so we can make sure to get all the other stuff in. We're doing basically the labs we must do to meet the course outline of record. And uh, I'm gonna try to use the remaining time to give you guys as much support as possible and extra lectures and, and uh, like tutoring sessions. So yeah, that's uh, that's the way we'll handle lab. Um, now I do want to introduce you to a tool that we're going to be using um, for some of the labs. So I'll open up. I don't have it posted yet, but um, coming up will be experiment ten. Um, Experiment 10, okay. So with experiment 10, there's also gonna be an Excel file um, because you're gonna be making a graph. Uh, so at the risk of showing the answers here, like I did the experiment and I made my graphs here. So you can submit an Excel file. Again, this could be done in Google, uh, Google Sheets as well. Uh, you could open this file in Google Sheets and, and edit it and do it that way too. You don't absolutely need Office. Um, and then for the report, for the online version, um, there's going to be a virtual lab. And in experiment 10, I give you also a link to video instructions on how to use this virtual lab. Uh, so this is the Chem Collective virtual lab. There's a video here. I strongly encourage you to, re to watch this video. I'll, ex I'll uh, upload experiment 10 very soon and it will have the link to this video. I strongly encourage you to watch it. Uh, I'll show you a few things right now though. Um, so it also tells you in experiment 10 here uh, in the online version that I'm gonna post to go to one particular virtual lab right here. And these are all HTML5 based, so they should work in any phone or whatever. I even tried it a little bit on my phone. It was okay. It's best on a desktop still. Uh, and so um, you got tabs here for solutions, glassware, so forth. Um, like in this one, let's say I want to titrate um, one molar sodium hydroxide 
I want to use that to try to trade. Uh, so I can click here for strong bases, strong acids, weak acids. Um, I want to use that to titrate, I don't know, uh, like one molar HCl. So I can get these quantities here of chemicals. And uh, let's say, so let's say I'm going to titrate 10 milliliters of that. I might grab a, an Erlenmeyer flask or a beaker and empty one. So the way I do that is I go into stockroom, I go to glassware and there's a variety of types of glassware here, Erlenmeyer flasks, graduated cylinders, pipettes and so forth. <laughs> so let's say I want to pipette uh, 10 milliliters of this. Uh, so I get a pipette here with the pipette pump on top and I drag it on top of the HCL and then there's going to be three windows and this video will tell you about this in detail. The sig fig window which asks you to write in exactly how many sig figs you're going to use. This one will, will automatically give you as many sig figs as the instrument can handle or realistic which just means like you can hold it to suck it up or to let it out. Um, so let's say sig, sig figs here if I'm doing this sig figs, I should know that this, this uh, pipette can go to 10.00 milliliters withdraw. And uh, now we can see here, if I close this, we can see the pipette has 10 milliliters in it. And so then I can, uh, I can just hold the pour since I'm just gonna let it all out on the realistic tab. If I hold it, the longer I hold it, the more it gets released. All 10 got released there. And so now I have the 10 milliliters of the acid in the flask. Okay, then uh, I can remove things that I don't need. Let's say I don't need this pipette anymore. So I right click it and I can remove it. Uh, I've got my HCL already, so I can right click it and I can remove that. To do my titration, um, what kind of glassware will I need to deliver the liquid into this if I'm doing it into this flask if I'm doing a titration? You guys know the name of it? Burette, right? Burette, yes. So if you go to glassware other, yes, that's right. Uh, you get a burette. A uh, burette is empty. Um, <clears throat> if we're doing a real lab, we might want to wash it a little bit with a couple milliliters of uh, So sometimes you got to watch out. Uh, it, it, it will, if it has a really long thing like this, it will go out of the page. So you have to scroll down. You can see we scroll down here. Uh, let's say I just I'll use precise this time. I just pour a milliliter in there and then I let it out. That's what I would do if I have a real burette. Uh, maybe I'd get a waste beaker here. Here's my waste beaker. I can actually rename these two. So I'll call this waste beaker. Uh, and then I'll put this on top of this one. And I'd say, you can see that I, I put one milliliter in it, but notice that doesn't go up to the 50. Uh, this is because there's a little space in the burette below where the readings are, but I let it out. So I've rinsed my burette with the sodium hydroxide. Oops. And now I want to pour my sodium hydroxide into the burette. Notice if I pour 50 milliliters, it goes up to two uh, because it's assuming that there's two milliliters of space in the tip, which it automatically fills. So I could put in another two and pour and I'll get to 0, 0.00. Um, okay, so now I have my burette filled with uh, sodium hydroxide. So I can probably remove the sodium hydroxide for now. And then I'm going to <clears throat> drag my burette uh, over the flask here. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, before that I might want to put some water. Usually you beef up your titration and an indicator. So let's say I'm, uh, 
I'm going to uh, get some water here. So on top of solutions, there's always some water. And I don't have to be real exact with this, so I won't use a pipette or anything. I just say, I'm gonna put in 50 milliliters of water in here about, just so that I have some volume so I can see. Another thing that's handy to do, um, I've noticed for titrations, and I'll talk about this a little bit, whoops, a little bit after till we get to titrations, is um, it's nice to have a, a, a beaker of just plain old water, or I can just take the distilled water and put it here so I can see the color. So this is just the water. Because when I put in, I'm gonna put in an acid base indicator, so on solutions, I go down to indicator, and I'll use phenolphthalein this time, and you want to put in a few drops, a uh, few drops like 0.5 milliliters should be fine. So I put that in there. And uh, so now when I'm done with my titration, it should turn light pink. Uh, and at this point um, for a titration, it's usually pretty useful to go to the hold the pour or to at least, or to specify how much you're going to put in. So let's say I'm going to put in at this point 0 0.50 milliliters at a time, which is kind of like a lot to start with, but I'll pour it and you'll see right now we have 60.5 milliliters, it will go up and this, this will move as well. Pour, okay, so I poured 0 0.50 milliliters and it's now in the flask, so it has 0 0.50 milliliters more. I'll do that again, okay. Maybe I am okay with doing one, 1 1.00. Let's try that. Uh, I'll pour that a few times. Okay, so I, I'm now down to two. I've delivered two milliliters. Now I've delivered three. Now four. Now five. I'm still not at my equivalence point. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now I happen to know that I'm getting close to my equivalence point. So I'm gonna start adding it bit by bit. This is where realistic is useful. If you just tap it, it will usually release 0 0.05 milliliters. 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And so you can keep doing that. You can also see the pH right here. So the pH is still quite low. When you're getting close to the equivalence point, we're, what we're gonna see when we do titrations is that the pH starts to rise very rapidly. So you gotta keep an eye, you can keep an eye on the pH, it also tells you the temperature. So that's the pH in this flask, which is selected. Okay, and we should be getting close now. So the pH increased quite a lot to 3.16. Let's do, uh, so maybe we, we go real to, we. Do a real, real slow now, 0 0.01. Um, and now it turned pink, see that? So uh, it's, that's why it's good to have a, a clear, uh, one with pure water next to it because it can be hard to tell that it's turned pink here without having a clear one next to it to notice that, oh yeah, these are different colors. Okay. And so it'll be mostly the titration labs we use for this. Uh, and so experiments 10 and 11 are gonna use this interface when we get to them. And uh, so I think that I've mostly explained uh, what's going to happen in lab and what's going to happen on McGraw-Hill Connect um, does anyone want to ask any more questions though? I'm sure there's lots of questions. Okay, and I was just going to Check my roster here again, see if anyone else has signed on here. Yeah, we got 11, just two more students. So if you still haven't signed up, make sure to do that. And I think we're, we're well on our way. Okay. Um, at this point, we've been on for an hour. 
<clears throat> so I think that for the rem let's see. Yeah, because I was having issues with the um, the presentation for the lecture part, I think that I'm just going to uh, let you guys use this time uh, to do experiment 17, or sorry, homework 17 problems right here, and or to get your your uh, your McGraw-Hill uh, Connect account. Okay, so basically review on chapter 17 on the next lab session we're going to focus on a review assignment uh, that I'll post up on, on Connect. Uh, and it's gonna be basically like a practice exam. So what I want you to do for the next lab session is to bring me your questions from this chapter 17 assignment. Also, uh, I'll try to get that up as soon as possible, but um, it, it, we'll probably just do it in the lab as much as possible or I'll be available for the lab time next time um, where you guys can do this practice exam basically and uh, <clears throat> and ask me any questions that you have I want to get you as comfortable as possible before Tuesday's exam because I know you're probably worried about doing stuff like this online I'm hoping once you go through that practice exam on Wednesday that you'll feel more comfortable uh, with getting, you know, getting ready for that exam next time. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, and so we'll also have time to, uh, I'll basically have time to show the answers for all the problems as well and make a video of that. Print screen on the homework, ah, and then paste into a PowerPoint. I see, okay. Oh, well, I can load them pretty quickly. Perhaps that's what, I mean, print screen is a little, I can snip. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do instead uh, to make sure to preserve the, uh, the formatting of the problems. I'll just snip it. So yeah, oh, that's probably the best way for you, Maxwell. And uh, so as I go forward and you know put out these assignments, I'll make sure to have a paper copy in case generating, because generating this paper copy sounds like more difficult than I anticipated it would be. So, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, uh, in summary, what to do today. So by next time. And I'll put this in an announcement too. By next class session. One, um, <clears throat> get McGraw Hill Connect account if you haven't already. Okay. Number two, um, <clears throat> start and hopefully and and try to finish a chapter 17 connect assignment so that you can ask questions about any of these and I can show you the answers if you need them. We'll do that in lab. Okay, number three. <clears throat> try to get, if you, yeah, I think you should, uh, your free Microsoft Word and Excel software. Now you don't absolutely need it, but I'm just saying I say get it. If you don't get it, let me know, but just get, get this if you can. It will be easier for you. Um, <clears throat> and so remember there is the help desk uh, if you're having issues with either Canvas or with uh, getting your free Microsoft software. Okay. <clears throat> Number four. Watch. So maybe I should say number two. Number two, watch the 
answer palette videos answer palette videos on connect so that you know how to put in the problems the correct way so i've assigned those uh, start on and try to finish the chapter 17 connect assignment get your free word and excel software <coughs> <coughs> Okay, and uh, number five, uh, just generally review the review um, the chapter chapter twenty three and seventeen uh, in textbooks and your notes from when we were back in class before. Uh, and bring me any questions that you had about these topics. And then uh, in the next class session, we're going to continue lecturing on chapter 18 in the lecture period. Uh, we're going to um, do a, a, uh, a practice test essentially for exam two so that we can do this. Now an important note about when we do exam two is I'm gonna give you guys two hours to do that. So it's going to bleed into the lab time a little bit. Uh, so we'll start lab a little bit late on that day because uh, I'm gonna give you guys two hours to do the exam. So I'll start the lab near the end and I'll basically show you how to do the lab assignment. Uh, and then you'll have a couple of days to finish it next week after your exam, okay? So uh, of course I'm, I can, uh, we can do Zoom chats and all of these email and all of those, any way you wanna contact me, please contact me. Uh, I'm just sitting in front of my computer and making assignments, grade, grading some stuff that was left over for my Chem 101 students. I'm here to help you through this transition. Don't be afraid to use, uh, you know, to use, use the fact that you have your professor on the line. Yeah, that's what I'm here for, I, I want to, uh, to be here for you. So um, one other thing that I wanted to point out is besides me, which I'm very available, there is this service called NetTutor uh, that offers tutoring as well. So that's also another option, but I, I think that you can, you know, you're just fine uh, just coming to me. Uh, I think that's fine, you know, I should be pretty available except perhaps on all parts of the weekend, but during the week, you know, normal business hours, I'll be quite available. Uh, <clears throat> I, do, uh, I do do lectures on Tuesday and Thursday. I have two Chem 101 classes. So uh, that's, you know, that's something to keep in mind is that during those classes, I'll probably be with them, yeah. So uh, before we go uh, offline here, and I uh, saved the video recording for you guys and put it up on YouTube. Uh, were there any other questions? Okay, well, thanks. Uh, thanks for being here today. We had all, every student here. Uh, and uh, I will, you know, just keep in touch with me and of course, <clears throat> for my Zoom room, I just do want to emphasize everything's going to be in Dr. Lemieux's Zoom room now. So if we say, oh, let's meet up at, you know, five to talk about problems, this is where we'll meet up right here. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah, the to do's. Sure. I know I'm about to put this in a. Uh, so here's, here's what to do by next time. I'll put that in Canvas too. All right. Do by class four one. Sure thing. Okay, so that should be in your announcements now. <coughs> Excuse me. Any other questions?
Okay, thanks. Uh, good to hear from you guys and everything. Again, again, please just let me know if you need any help. I know you didn't sign up for an online class. You didn't want an online class necessarily, uh, but it seems that's all we have, all we can do uh, coming down from the state here. So, all right. Thanks, guys. And uh, I will see you online later. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good day.